Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by the episode of the old Firebird Restoration Station. My name is John, and the bed of the old crap lash here is what you see, the Great Pumpkin Project 1968 Firebird. Took all those pieces here this week to have it all media blasted, and he is already done. But you want to see how much damage is done, or how much rust actually ate those pieces and parts up? They didn't look too bad, but we got some work to do, so I want to get all that stuff out. We're going to look at these parts together and show you what we got. So let's see what did we end up with. The worst of them all is going to be the passer side fender. I knew it had some rot here in the back, but as you can see, it went up a little further, almost to the body line. Those patches don't quite go up that far, so eh, I'm not sure on this yet. I kind of expected some holes down here. That's not the ordinary, and we knew about the rust damage here. So hmm, maybe fix the fender. Um, may I see what I can find. The doors, they look fantastic, but check this out. We have some holes, they look great from the outside, um, but these are actually little spots coming from the inside out. So we're gonna have to do some uh, patchwork on these doors. I think other than that, the door looks really good. Back corner looks nice. The rest of the skin looks good. So I think we're just gonna end up patching that. We're not going to put a whole skin on it. Now the driver's side door, same thing. We got the same little spots going on down here. These are holes clean through. Uh, tells you a lot of the story when you media blast this stuff. Like I said, you can see or somewhere in life this car use the drill and the slide hammer technique to pull a dent. Not the preferred way, but that was how it was done. Now the driver's side fender in the hand, that's pretty easy to fix. I got the patch for the inner brace, outer skin. That should be pretty straightforward. We'll definitely do a video on that. And here in the front, you can see all the dents. But here's the thing about it. We stripped all that Bondo out prior to. I don't think we damaged it further by media blasting that fender, so that's great. Lower valence come out really clean and nice. Um, our little filler panel looks good. Core support in fantastic shape. Um, so all I'm gonna do that is just paint that one. And then the inner fender wells, even where the battery was at, this thing came out really clean and really nice. Now you'll see some pitting, but it is not rusted through and looks really good. So I think we did really good when it comes to those. The cowling looks nice, so definitely not an issue with that. Rear axle, I'll tell you. This is really cool, the rear axle. Check this out. Rarely can you ever see the stamping of the actual rear end code, the XB. That tells you your gear ratio and stuff. Normally, that is so rusted up and gone. This one actually still really clean. Even the part numbers look really nice. So this rear axle is going to paint up really, really nice. And I don't foresee any problems out of this. So that's really pretty cool. And actually, check this out. Number eight stamps that diff cover. So like I said, normally the cars I work on, this is severely pitted and rusted, but this one looks really clean. So that's a plus. I got the control arms blasted. We saw the stripping the control arm bushings out of the lower. So that's what we did there. Now the subframe though, the front frame of the car looks really nice. There was no surprises, except for when we talked about this area here looked really rusty. And I said, check these out carefully on your cars. Check that out. There'd be a hole right there. So we're gonna have to do some repairs here. Um, I was kind of wondering, I said, wait and see what happens when you get it back from the blaster. Well, this is gonna need some attention. As for the rest of it though, looks real good. No severe pitting. I think we just got a fab of a piece back here and repair that. The front looks good. It's a little bit of pitting, but I don't think we got into the structure of that thing. Now this looks like a crack, which just crud still deep in the crevices. So this is really nice. As for the rest of the subframe, I don't see any surprises, so super happy with that. And of course, we already got our patches all done. That looks real good. So check us out, we actually have four round body mounting holes that we can tie this back into the car when we're ready to put it back in there. So, really as for the subframe goes, one place we gotta work on right there. So, there you have it. There's all the pieces, parts back from the media blaster. A little more work than anticipated. Wasn't expecting anything on the doors. We found the Bondo. 
but I wasn't expecting rust holes, but I'll show you how to take care of that and doctor that up. But as the rest of the stuff looks really nice. So you have it. all these pieces, parts, it's gonna need a little more work than we anticipated, but not the end of the world. We like to doctor these things up, but something to keep in mind here, check out this rear axle. That is cast. And the problem with cast is it will rust super, super quick because it's all bare metal. Sheet metal, you can typically get it by for a little while for you to actually prime it. But that cast iron stuff must be primed immediately or it's gonna start rusting. So I'm gonna get the paint gun out, put a little epoxy primer on all this, either epoxy or self-etching primer is great over sandblasted items. And the other thing is there's no other prep work required, no acid etching, no, no cleaning with any kind of chemicals. As long as you didn't finger them up too bad with your fingerprints, your dirty mitts, go ahead and hit all this stuff with primer and it will seal it all up until you're ready to do the body work like the doors need. But this is part of the adventure. And check out here behind me, see these boxes of goodies here? That's all the pieces and parts and the goodies start putting this thing, and of course, back on the ground and back together. So collecting all the parts, as soon as we get these things painted, we're gonna start slapping this thing together and actually maybe have a rolling chassis again. So looking forward to that too. But anyway, I'm gonna get the paint gun out and get some paint on all this stuff and see how far we can get before we lose all my daylight. Cause this wasn't my plan this evening, right? sandblaster guy it was about a week ahead of what i anticipated but hey no worries we can make it happen so let's get this stuff painted Okay, got everything primed, differentials all done. Didn't do the drums, so I'm gonna get replaced the ones. These panels look pretty good. Sometimes in priming things, it'll actually highlight a little more damage. We knew about the holes there. That driver's side door, I'm really debating that uh, maybe you need to go different. We know we have holes there. We have all that body damage up the whole thing. So here's something else that's kind of sad. Passenger side door looks great. Let's see these little specks here. That's rot through from the inside out. I think it's time, maybe, to do a door scan. So I'm gonna do a video on replacing a door scan looks like. And even this driver's side fender, or sorry, passenger side fender, still not really loving this thing. It's a little worse than I thought it was going to be getting it back. So I'm going to maybe do some surfing on the old interweb, see what I can learn for maybe a, a good used fender, and then maybe order up a door scan. But as for the rest of the stuff, I'm tired, I'm worn out. Got all this stuff primed, but I got about three hours invested in priming everything and it dries really fast to the touch as epoxy primer, but I'm done. I think I've had enough fun for this evening, but that's what it takes to get everything from a media blaster, get it all sealed up and painted, and then still kind of put all of it back in the garage. So, so with that being said, trying to keep it fun this time around, okay, it was still kind of fun because I'm seeing progress, but it was a lot to take on. I probably should have planned this a little differently, but I anticipated him having the stuff for a couple weeks, not two days um but i said you can't leave this stuff bare metal if i would have probably coordinated differently probably should have told them hey finish it on a friday for me have all day saturday paint this but uh i really can't tell but i promise you it's just about the sun about pop down over the horizon over there and get to dark so and it's almost eight o'clock too so nonetheless you see what it takes now get stuff from the media blast you're inspected we're gonna buy some more parts unfortunately but it's the name of the game want to make a super nice car these are some of the things you gotta look into now, of course, the driver quality or something else, maybe make that door work, but I think I wanna do this car up a little nicer than that because we're gonna represent what Vinyl Village Garage can do, build a super nice car in a two car garage. Even as crazy as it looks, this car is gonna be fantastic condition when it's done. So anyway, like I typically do at the end, it's kind of ramble because I'm having too much fun. Appreciate you guys following the journey. If you could, please help me grow the channel. Share with anybody who might find these tips helpful, useful, or again, anything you'd like to see, let me know. I'll make sure I do the video because literally every nut and bolt of this car has been removed and we're gonna put it back together. So any part of the build, I can get you in on. So. Nonetheless, I've said enough. Time to eat, put the rest of the stuff away, and we'll catch you guys next time.